Have you ever seen a flower that's managed to somehow grow up through a crack in the sidewalk? I've often wondered if that delicate little flower caused the crack in the hard concrete, or did it somehow instinctively follow the light towards the opening? How did that little flower, which started off as a small seed, get down into that crack, that dark little tight space? Did the seed float into there on accident, or was it divinely placed there to bring beauty and hope in an unlikely place, in an unexpected way? I can relate. I have felt like that little seed trying to find its, its way up and out and onward, lost and sort of struggling in the dark. I felt that way. At times feeling a deep purpose within that's waiting to burst forth in beauty, but not sure if it'll ever see the light of day. Are you feeling that way, given all that's been happening? If so, I wanna challenge you today. I wanna challenge you to stop waiting and bloom where you're planted. Welcome to the Everyday Disciple Podcast, where you'll learn how to live with greater intentionality and an integrated faith that naturally fits into every area of life. In other words, discipleship as a lifestyle. This is the stuff your parents, pastors, and seminary professors probably forgot to tell you. And now, here's your host, Caesar Kalinowski. All right, here we go, rocking again. Do you love the intro music? I do. It is really close. I've never really shared this before. It's really close, as close as we could find to uh, a song called Cantaloupe by us three. It's really old, but I always dug it. But I would have to pay like a trillion dollars uh, a year to use the actual track. So we found something close. I hope you're digging that. Hope you're having a good week. This has been a really good week for me. I feel like I've gotten a lot done and yet had some really, really good time with family and community stuff going on and all. My daughter came over yesterday. Well, my daughter, uh, our daughter, our youngest daughter, Justine, came over yesterday because she just wanted to make us lunch. Isn't that awesome? And she is probably the best cook in our family, which is saying a lot because Tina's, well, maybe Tina is, but I think Justine might have surpassed her. She came over and made us some bon mi. I don't know if you know that, it's like a Vietnamese style sandwich, but we have modified it based on some we've had elsewhere where we replaced the meat with corned beef. Oh, so, so good. Anyway, then we started digging out, you know, boxes of, of pictures and stuff. It was one of those weird kind of blessed days where we started digging out boxes of pictures, old pictures, and um, I had taken out a a box of stuff from my band years when I was you know, a musician for a living, and of course, uh, many hairstyles ago, and that's always crazy and funny to look at. N not just me, but everybody included, lots of different hairstyles. And then Tina gets it in her head. She says, wait a minute, and she finds little baggies with hair in it, like my hair when I cut it from really long to really short, and our son who, when he was little, had a little kind of one of those rat tail things, and then his son, Caesar now, uh, also had really, really long curly blonde hair, and then when they cut it uh, not too long ago, uh, she grabbed that, and so, yeah, that's kind of icky, kind of weird, but, you know, really fun stuff, and stuff we, I don't know, are corny and enjoy. I think everybody does, right? Digging out your old pictures, looking back to look forward sometimes. Hey, before I forget, I want to ask you to join us over on Facebook, in our Facebook group, if you've not done that yet. There are thousands of y'all who have, but uh, we get to uh, talk about the episode pick up links for resources, ask questions in life just in general, connected to discipleship and mission. A lot of good advice in there, but uh, you also it's a good way to talk to, to me, to us, uh, Tina and I, and others in the community, and uh, really hang out with like-minded people. If you've not done that yet, please do so. You can search that up, Everyday Disciple Podcast in Facebook, or made it real easy for you, once you have your Facebook page open, just... Uh, just type in everydaydisciple.com forward slash Facebook into your URL, and it'll take you right to our page, and then you just hit join, and off you go. All right. So with all the changes we've seen in life over the past several years and continuing to change, it's like all that everybody's talking about. Um, many people I know kind of noticed a little trend here. They've sort of stalled in their disciple making and living life on mission, discipleship as a lifestyle. Kind of stalled a bit, a little understandable. There's been a, a, so much, like I said, so much change. A lot of churches are just sort of in neutral 
waiting for things to return to the way they were, which will never happen, I believe. Uh, in fact, I think everybody probably believes at this point. Um, people are moving and changing jobs at record levels. They're just looking for something different. Uh, the way they're schooling their kids has changed for almost everyone. If you have kids, everything is different, and many people seem to have lost their way. They're feeling a bit stuck. They've put disciple-making and this lifestyle of living on mission and community on hold. They're just sort of waiting. I was thinking about this. Have you ever seen a flower that's managed to somehow grow up through a crack in the sidewalk? Probably you have. Most people have. I've often wondered if that delicate little flower caused the crack in the hard concrete, or did it somehow instinctively follow the light towards the opening? Like, how did that little flower, which started off as a small seed, get down into that crack, that dark little tight space? Did the seed float into there on accident, or was it divinely placed there to bring beauty and hope in an unlikely place, in an unexpected way? I can relate. I have felt like that little seed trying to find its, its way up and out and onward lost and sort of struggling in the dark. I felt that way. And at times feeling a deep purpose within that's waiting to burst forth in beauty, but not sure if it'll ever see the light of day. Are you feeling that way, given all that's been happening? If so, I want to challenge you today. I want to challenge you to stop waiting and bloom where you're planted, right where you're at. I'm going to give you seven things to consider when you're feeling stuck on mission or in ministry or just in life in general, all right? I hope, I hope this will help get you going, encourage you, get you a little unstuck. And just, again, to, you know, to bloom where you're planted, be that little flower busting out of the crack. Okay, here's the first one. Every step in life is preparing you for the next one. Do you believe that? How are you doing right now at stewarding all that God has given you? Not just your stuff, but your circumstances. Yep, we get to steward our circumstances too because they're circumstances God has divinely placed us in and he's working on us and conforming us and training us for what's next. Stewardship's not just about money and hard you know, resources and stuff. It's also about our circumstances. Luke 16.10 says, faithful with a little, faithful with a lot. And our good Father in heaven is always preparing us for what's next on our journey of becoming more and more like Jesus and, and helping show others the way and invite them to a place at the table, a place in his family, right? So I want to just remind you of that, that where, whatever, wherever you're at, whatever you're feeling or experiencing, God's using this and preparing you for the next step, faithful with a little, faithful with a lot. Second, stop complaining. Okay, if if you're stuck and you just feel like, you know, this whole whatever social distancing, politics, whatever is that's and, you know, just stop complaining. Philippians 2, 14, 15, right? I love this from the message. It says, do everything readily, <laughs> readily and cheerfully. No, no bickering or complaining, no second guessing allowed. Go out into the world uncorrupted, a breath of fresh air in this squalid and polluted society. Provide people with a glimpse of good living and of the living God. Oh, that is so good, right? That, that makes me want to stop complaining and count my blessings. And here's something else, too. Get rid of your if-onlys. You know what I'm saying. If only this or that. And change them to if this, then that. Meaning, if this is where God has me or has us, then I'm going to trust him and choose to love it and enjoy it without making you know, excuses, complaining, and all of that. And that's number three. Stop making excuses. Stop blaming your lack of intentionality on your circumstances, on your house. Oh, it's not big enough, or our, our living room's not right, or, or you know, my cooking's no good, or my kids, they, they, that doesn't work out for them and their schedules, or, you know, stop making excuses. Your job's in the way of making disciples, or your health, or this social distancing. Like, just, just get past all that. Again, from number two, get rid of your if-onlys 
and, and turn them in. If this, then that. There's always a way to move forward. There really is. There really is. So stop making excuses, okay? Between you and me, <laughs> let's just stop making excuses. Here's another one, number four. Remember, you have been blessed to be a blessing. There's always something that you can do to show others God's glory, the way he really is, his heart and his love. In our communities, we try and live in a rhythm of blessing people through, we say, either in words, gifts, or actions. Maybe you've heard me talk about this before. Yeah, bless people with either words, gifts, or actions. You can do that right now, every day, consistently. I know you can. So, you know, take a small treat to a friend. Perhaps bring dinner to a neighbor. Babysit someone's kids. Make their day better. Help them out. Start to build that relationship. Write a note to someone, like a handwritten note to someone in need. There are all kinds of ways that we can look at what we've been blessed with and use it to bless others with our stuff, a bit of our time, a word of encouragement. You get the picture. Number five, decide to be all in regardless of your present circumstances. Yeah, decide to be all in. Each of us gets to choose our responses to everything in life, regardless of what we want or wish we had or what we wish was happening. We can choose to be all in. Best I can, I am all in, and we can live with great intentionality right where we're at, no matter the circumstances. Like I said, we all get to choose our response. And a friend of mine once said to me, we all choose to do exactly what we want each day. So I want to encourage you, just decide now to be all in regardless of whatever your present circumstances you're, you're facing or feeling or experiencing. Number six, real practical here. Identify one new person of peace in your life and, and start to spend time with them. Person of peace, you can go and Google past episodes. I teach on that a lot. Just a, like four or five weeks back, I did a whole episode, a special episode on finding your person of peace. Those are those people that are leaning in to relationship with you. They like you. They want to hang out. They're easy to spend time with. When you invite them to do something, they say, yeah. Then they look to serve you back. That's what a person of peace looks like. When you talk about your life, your faith, your understanding of who God is in that, it doesn't flip them out. They're kind of interested. I want you to, I want to encourage you, just identify one new person of peace at least. And maybe encourage those in your community, if they're feeling a little stuck, a little off track, to do the same. And then start spending time with them. Treat them like part of your family. Share your life and faith with them consistently with intentionality and see what God does with that. Here's number seven. Stop waiting. Yeah, stop waiting. A mentor in my life said that years ago he was told, you don't have to get it perfect. You just have to get it going. <laughs> That's good advice. Stop waiting for perfection, either in your circumstance or in your own life, and just get going. I encourage you right now to take the very next small step God shows you and ask him, you know, just ask him, what's next, Lord? Like that, and take that step, right? We actually, that's like a vernacular in our world and in our coaching and in, in our disciple making this phrase, what's next, Lord? Show us. And then be faithful and obedient to do that with a person of peace or with someone in your family. Maybe you've been putting off some relational strife or something that there's a little distance or ickiness or whatever. What's next, Lord? And do that. Or maybe it's something in, as a church or as a missional community. Maybe you've put everything on hold because, well, everybody, da, 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 whatever. Like, what's next, Lord? What's the very next thing you'd have us do? When we remember who's really in charge and that our master has the perfect plan, the master plan, everything will feel better, a little brighter. Everything's filled with more hope and expectancy. Mm -hmm. That's how it goes. I hope those seven things uh, are helping to maybe give you the nudge you've needed. In my experience, there is always something next that can derail us or keep us from the life that Jesus died to give us. There's always something else, one more reason, one more thing, those people, that issue, my health, my work, something, right? And we're not really getting the job done. 
that we get to. We're not seeing a movement of disciple making springing out of, of normal everyday life in the ways that I really believe we can and that Jesus showed us and modeled for us. But we can. We can. And it does start with one small step, one little bit of faith connected to some intentionality for our churches, for our families, for our neighborhood. God wants to do that. I hope we'll let him. There's this poet named David Ignatow, and he wrote, if flowers want to grow right out of concrete sidewalk cracks, I'm going to bend down and smell them. Maybe you're that flower. (laughs) If it seems dark where you're at right now, with God's help, you can bloom, even through a small crack in the sidewalk. I hope you believe that. I, I know this is, a, this is a little more maybe esoteric than I normally talk, but I, I know some of us are really feeling this. Maybe you're that, sm- that small flower, and, and God just wants you to trust him and push through, and others are waiting to come and bend down and <laughs> smell you a little. Now, sometimes the way God helps us is by bringing others into our lives that are able to encourage us and show us the way, And I'd love, I'd love to help you start to bloom and make disciples right where you're at right now and show you how to help others in your life and in your community do the same. That's why we do coaching. And we've got some coaching cohorts that are starting up right now. If you've ever been thinking about this or wondering about how much time it takes or what's the investment, all that, I'd love to tell you more about our coaching and mentorship. I do it with my wife, Tina. We coach couples as couples and give you full framework for making disciples and living this as a family first and then letting the rings of relationship move outward and then how to train others. We've got new cohorts starting right now, and we'd love to tell you about that and and get started. If you want to learn more, go ahead and check out everydaydisciple.com forward slash coaching. Yep, just go to that in your browser, everydaydisciple.com forward slash coaching. There's a bunch of information there, a little form you can fill out. We can hop on a discovery call, and I can tell you more about it. Okay, a bit shorter episode than normal. Maybe you like that. Maybe you got it all in before you got out of the car, before you finished your workout today. But I want to leave you with the big three takeaways from today's topic. If nothing else, you don't want to miss these sort of summary here. As always, you can get a printable PDF of this week's Big Three as a free download by going to everydaydisciple.com forward slash Big Three. Pretty easy. Here's the Big Three for this week. First, God knows the plans he has for you. He does. And those are plans of blessing and righteousness. Remember that verse in Jeremiah 29, 11? For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you hope and a future. Uh Uh-huh. Wherever God has you today is preparation for where he'll take you next. In his timing, his perfect timing, and for his good purposes. And you can trust him and live as a blessing and make disciples right where you're planted now. Second, number two. Decide to be all in, regardless of your circumstances. Faith, combined with intentionality, is always what drives us forward on mission. Let me say that again. Faith, combined with intentionality, is always what drives us forward on mission. As Christians, just as a little reminder here, we have God's own spirit dwelling inside of us, leading us in all the ways of truth. And the truth is, we really lack nothing for the mission. Our waiting, complaining, and excuses are coming from fear or self-love and false beliefs. So, number three, stop waiting and do something now. When we remember that we don't have to have the master plan because our master has the plan, we can relax and trust God to lead us one step at a time based on his sovereignty. So any perceived lack or waiting for a different situation so we can really get going on mission, is putting our own sovereignty above God's, right? Your master has the plan, so ask, what's next, Lord? And get started with him and take that first small step today. Yeah, and, and again, maybe, maybe that first small step is to check out 
what our coaching is about and, and getting some help if you're feeling this way or consistently feeling stuck and it's now it's another year and oh well there was a I had some good excuses for last year but now what about this year and so yeah I just maybe check it out at least I'd love to hop on a call with you explain more see if it's a good fit check it out go to everydaydisciple.com forward slash coaching easy 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 okay that's it for today I hope you'll join me next week all right talk to you soon Thanks for joining us today. For more information on this show and to get loads of free discipleship resources, visit everydaydisciple.com. And remember, you really can live with the spiritual freedom and relational peace that Jesus promised every day.